Hi, this is Paul Hamilton. I'm going to show you the EFIS that I use on the trike as well as on the airplane. This is something that you can download and utilize exactly as I'm going to show you right now. Okay, I've done a pretty good job here at outlining all the specific steps in text, but I'm going to just show you a few of the things here to get you going. First, you're going to go to the, um, the website you click on here, download the simulator, and of course, once you do that, we're gonna, I'm going to go in here and show you some different things on how to do that. Initially, we're going to go to the project, and I'm going to have to move this over here for you to be able to see that. We go to project. Here you can see we've got the Challenger, which is the largest, the Explorer, which we're going to use, the Discovery, which is a smaller. So we're going to stick with the project as Explorer because it's about the right size. And we're going to go in and create a new blank project. Now, and of course, when we do that, this is the project that I've got. You type the name in, uh, click OK, and then you're going to have your new project right here. So one of the things we need to do is to get the screens and load them into the program here. So essentially, we can go to File Manager, initially download the screens, and I'll have a number of examples of, of screens for different uh, applications. We need to perhaps unzip and move those into this MMC. The screens are going to look like uh, this right here, uh, MIF, Engine, Screens, Flight Screens, all the different uh, screens. So basically, download those, move them onto this MMC. This is like the uh, SD card on the actual computer and then once we get our screens in here then we can install them. Okay now before you actually install the screens our airspeed is reading something here. This has a little bug in here where you have to go into the sensor simulation show pressure sensors and then you've got to move your airspeed. We'll move this over here so you can see that you tend to take your airspeed move that down to zero that will allow you to install the screens. For some reason, it doesn't want you to install the screens here uh, if you're actually flying. The next step here is we're going to go into our menu, install tasks. We're going to go into install screen files to screen folders, and that will move those screen files into your screen folders, and your screens will be installed. And before we actually can see the screens, we need to go into uh, menu, System Setup Menu, and we have to go down to Standard System Selections. Standard System Selections here, we're going to click on that. And we can see down here that we've got our Flight Individual Screens Custom Enables. And we make sure that we've got custom design and screens folders. So we have to make sure all those and go to the second page. Make sure you get all of them. And, and you can end up doing that for your flight, engine, fuel, and info. Now you're going to actually be able to see your screens on the panel here. Our next step is install the navigation data sectional and vector maps for your area. So we go to the uh, website here, and this is what we see. And here we get, we've got uh, uh, nav data. We download that. We download our raster maps. Um, and these are just follow the directions here. The terrain, um, follow the directions uh, given on the website and of course the vector map. So once we download all that, we're going to go ahead and install those. And again, we can go back to our file manager here and we can, this is where we go into our project and notice how we've got all of our information here. So when we get done, we're going to have our, we're going to see our maps in here. We're going to see our nav data in here. We're going to see our screens in here, and we're going to see our terrain in here. And here, we just simply follow the directions exactly on the website, step by step, to install your navigation data sectional and vector maps.
Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go in and set our units. Menu, System Setup, and of course System Units Setup. And here we can go through altitude, feet, we can, uh, different options there, miles, Fahrenheit, oil pressure, PSI, manifold pressure, uh, fuel pressure, gallons. I'm going to set our atmospheric pressure to inches of, uh, inches of mercury, hour, fraction, minutes, geographic position. Here's your different GPS positions. So you can set your units as you want those. So now what we're going to do is we're going to select our desired location and just altitude and airspeed. So first of all, we're going to go to sensor simulation. We're going to, we're going to go to sensor simulation. We're going to go down to show GPS. Put in your latitude and longitude. Notice uh, north 35, west 120. And here we can also adjust our direction and ground speed. And what we're going to do... As you see, our airspeed right now is, is zero, ground speed 90. And you may as well say save current position if this is about in your area here. Save current position. That way, when you start it up, it'll always come back to that. Okay, so we've got our GPS ground speed. Now we need to go into our sensor simulation, show pressure sensors. Now we're going to move our dynamic pressure here. We're going to move that. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to try and make our true airspeed match our ground speed. And before you do that, you probably want to go ahead and move your um, static pressure altimeter to where you want it. I've got this set at 10,000 feet since I'm in kind of a high area here, so that's what I'm going to do. Set that at 10,000. And now we can go back, and you pretty much want to make your ground speed equal your um, true airspeed. We can see our ground speed here to equal our true airspeed. We're going to bring that down a little bit. If your ground speed equals your true airspeed, that would simulate flying in calm air. And of course, we can see our indicated here, and this program automatically converts it to true airspeed, and your true airspeed should equal your ground speed. So next thing we want to do is set up the engine. This is what you're seeing right now. So as we go into our sensor simulation, RDAC, we're going to go ahead and switch the RDAC on and off, and now we can go ahead and adjust all of our um, temperatures here to, to equal what is reasonable for your particular aircraft. Now here I've got EGTs, you know, here's our EGTs 1, oil temperature, we just go right down here, oil temperature, oil pressure, fuel pressure, uh, unfortunately, the fuel levels do not work. We've got a rev counter. We can, I've got that to set to about, what, 4,000 4, RPM. Fuel flow, I've got that set to 4 gallons per hour. And manifold pressure, we got that up into a reasonable level here. And now, basically, your engine instruments are set. Typically, there is six of these. And for the four-cylinder, what we're going to do is we need to go into our um, menu, system setup, engine monitoring, set up RDAC 1 probes and senders, and what we do is we go to the TC channel scan setup, and notice how I've um, clicked all these, clicked our thermal couples for our, um, EGTs to not used, that way we only get four uh, EGTs up here. And that with your engine setup. Okay, so now we can go in and finalize our 3D screens here. So we're going to go into menu and we can see this 3D view setup. And here there, there's a number of different things you can change here to, um, to, to, to change how your screen looks right here. So the main thing we want to do is make sure we hit this use GPS flight path and that will uh, fix us up here. And we can also go to our sensor simulation. 
sensor simulation, we can go down to uh, show uh, attitude. And here we've got uh, uh, heading, rate of turn. Now, if your G-meter shows up here, you have to go back to your G-force and adjust that to get it within the range where it doesn't show up here. And in some screens, you're going to have to go ahead and turn this on or off to um, get get what you what you want down here. And with the airplanes, you've got a um, um, your ball down here, and that'll that'll get rid of that uh, X on there. So now we're we've we've pretty much got everything done here. Go ahead and uh, if you want a transponder radio on the top here, and I've already got these installed. Um, just follow the directions on installing the COM1 and transponder, and you'll have those up here ready to go. This is kind of nice too because when we we can activate our, our, our radio and com, com system here and our transponder here. So pretty much now what you've done is you've got everything set up here. We're going to go ahead and end this basic review of the setup. But bas basically, go to the specific steps I've listed on the website, and that will help you get your system set up for you. Next, we'll move on to some lessons that work with operating the, the system itself.